Welcome traders to this week's live market and trade analysis session with me, Patrick Munley. We are going to get going here in just another 10 or 15 seconds. Uh, just before we do, a quick audio and sound check. If you can hear me and you can see the welcome screen, if you would type a Y into the chat box so that I know we are good to go. Thanks very much, guys. Okay, that is 1 p.m. British summer time, and we are going to jump into the charts in a minute. First of all, uh, as always, want to adhere to the risk disclaimer, most specifically for uh, today's discussion. The views expressed by me are solely mine. They're not indicative or representative of those held by Tickmill UK or Tickmill Europe Limited. For those of you here for the first time, brief introduction to myself. After university, I joined a City PLC consulting firm. I left with some colleagues and went on to successfully co-found and exit a consulting startup focused on C-suite executive search for technology businesses. Essentially, I had a front row seat to the dot-com bubble, witnessing people make and lose a fortune in the market, sometimes quite literally overnight. So I decided to explore my curiosity for markets. With some capital to play with and some time on my hands, I started day trading the S&P 500, or more appropriately at that stage, day gambling. After some early beginner's luck, I racked up some pretty solid gains. However, as is often the case, my beginner's luck ran out, and as the market phase changed, I began to average down into what would prove to be losing positions. I ultimately gave back all my gains and experienced a significant six-figure hit to my capital. To say this was a gut-wrenching and sobering experience is an understatement. I really had to stand back and figure out if it was feasible for me to make a living from the market. So I decided to get serious about trading and sought out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. Working with my mentor for a period of 18 months to two years was a time during which I upped not just my technical game in terms of researching, developing, extensively back and forward testing strategies that crucially suited my personality, all of which were underpinned by a rigorous risk management approach. But most importantly, during the period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably most importantly of all, I made the watershed shift from being a highly goal-orientated individual focused on financial gains to becoming purely process-orientated. So what does that actually mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy, oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. However, once you become process orientated and you have a professional trading mindset and you understand the true nature of trading being a numbers game in which you're simply playing the probabilities, you lose the emotional investment and that hellish emotional roller coaster feeling of living and dying by the outcomes of individual trades. So I'm no longer concerned with the outcome of an individual trade or even a small string of trades. My focus is on the next 100 trades because I know if I focus on excellence in ex execution, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi-strategy approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. Since 2013, I've also been managing investor capital through a managed account service, again, delivering annual positive returns. I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. Since 2010, I've mentored hundreds of private traders of all experience levels, from complete novices to former CME floor traders, in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. In addition to my fund management and mentoring, I'm resident market expert, exclusively providing market and trade analysis to Tickmill clients. I provide an in-depth daily market outlook, breaking down the fundamental and technical drivers for the day ahead. I also provide daily technical trade setup videos for about three to five markets that I'm actively tracking, and I share those through the Tickmill Trading View accounts. I also run Tickmill's e-mini strategy Facebook group, where I post a daily video outlining my pre-market trade plan for the New York cash trading session for the S&P 500. I give my bias for the day ahead and the specific action areas where I'm looking to engage the market. These pre-market plans have delivered over uh, 2,400 points of profit since we launched the group last April. Second signal strategy group I run is for traders who really want to take their trading to the next level. Tickmill Futures Telegram Group is a real-time environment where on a daily basis, I share in-depth insights and analysis and real-time trades. 
I also provide live commentary during the opening hour of the New York cash session, where traders can essentially see in real time how I dissect the markets and I identify asymmetric trading opportunities. These sessions act as a platform helping traders to develop a professional, consistent approach to navigating the markets and the mental mind games that must be mastered to make it as a profitable market operator. Okay, so that gives you a flavor of where it is I'm coming from. And we are going to jump into the charts now. I would just say um, in terms of the format, I'm going to run through uh, the charts that I'm actively tracking at the moment where I see uh, potential trading opportunities developing. Um, and then at the end, I will open up a Q&A session. So if you've got a chart you want me to take a look at that I don't cover in my presentation, you can type it into the chat box and I'll come back to it at the end. Equally, if you have any questions as we're going through the, the charts, just, type, just put those into the chat box as well. And like I say, at the end, I'll come back to those and I'll make sure we cover them all off before wrapping up this session. So as always, let's start with the S&P 500 or the e-mini S&P futures contract, which is what I trade. What setup really hasn't changed from last week. I was tracking a five wave sequence, which completed into the 16th of June. Since then, I've been looking for upside to develop. Uh, we have traded to the long side. I've been actively trading uh, this market um, in the Telegram group and sharing trades. I had a, had a very good run in terms of long positions. Um, in terms of the intraday trades, I've, I've been trying to get a, a swing long position going, but uh, due to the uh, intraday volatility, it's been a little bit tricky. So what I'm looking for now is any move back through 38.05 to suggest that we're going to break out of this triangle and extend to the upside. The initial, uh, the initial further resistance likely at the 38. Uh, 40s. If we can get through there, then we have weekly projected range resistance, 38.92, and we have the gap there as well at 39.05. Uh, ultimately, what I'd be looking for would be a uh, bear market rally here to develop and get a test up into the high volume node, 41.29, and we also have the trend line resistance coming in there as well. You can see here in terms of the daily candles, we are, this is a bullish configuration at the moment, so I still remain uh, bullish here for now. It will really take a close back through the pivot here at uh, 3690s to suggest that um, we, have, uh, we've, we have a problem in terms of the upside and they're actually going to rotate lower again. And we'd be thinking about a move back through the current cycle lows into that 36. 40 area, we have weekly projected range support down to 35.74 and the 161 extension of this last move to the upside coming in there as well, 35.66. But for now, like I say, I'm focused on the upside uh, as, we, uh, as we defend the, uh, the pivot at 36.95. <clears throat> Moving to the NASDAQ, you'll see these equity indexes, quite a lot of them have a a similar setup here at the moment. Um, with respect to the NASDAQ, again, we completed a five wave sequence. We have moved uh, to the upside. What I'm looking at now is the potential that we're actually going to uh, complete a corrective pattern here in the NASDAQ. Let me draw this in for you. <clears throat> so from this swing here to this swing here, we get an equality objective, which is going to coincide with the daily projected range resistance. So if we take out the resistance here at 11,750, the immediate target then is gonna be 11,900. So about 150 points of upside to play for there. Um, and then we'll see if sellers are gonna step back in. We've also got the gap there, uh, 11,884. So that's the target zone if we can get through the current range resistance in terms of the NASDAQ. We also have a descending trend line coming in uh, just above there, 12,100. We'd really need to take that out to see a more meaningful upside attempt in terms of the NASDAQ for now. But uh, it's similar to the, uh, the, the, the S&P, sorry. We are in a bullish, uh, a bullish pattern at the moment, and it would need to, we'd need to see a loss on a closing basis, 11,317, to suggest that uh, we're going to trade lower again and retest the current cycle loans.
So the Dow Jones, similar setup really to the NASDAQ. Um, we have a potential inverse head and shoulder scenario here. So this is our left shoulder, this is our head, and this is our right shoulder. So any move through resistance at 30,770s should see us test up there. 30,989, so just below that 31,000 level would be the quality objective for this corrective move. And then we'll see if sellers are going to step back in again or if we can get a, a more meaningful squeeze developing. Let's just draw in the internal trend line resistance here so you can see where we could be headed. So if we can, uh, if we don't get, if we don't find sellers at the quality objective, 30,989, then we've got this trend line resistance coming in 32,250 area. So that would be the target if we can get a squeeze going here. Like I say, still a nice bullish configuration. Um, these candles are, aren't defined by the open, high, low and close for their color. They're defined by a five period volume weighted average price. Uh, so it's a five day look back. And if we're trading above that volume weighted average price, then the candle will be green. If we're trading below, it's red. And I use those for defining, uh, defining trends. So we're bullish here and um, are looking for the momentum divergence continues to be maintained. So the setup for me at this stage is to play counter trend longs in these indexes. The one that's, uh, well, there are a couple actually that, that are a little bit weaker. Um, we have here the Russell. We have the all the, the the other U.S. equity indexes have all tested their larger equality objectives versus their daily swing structures. That hasn't happened yet in the Russell. However, from a daily trend perspective, we are bullish. We're trading above the five period look back, but uh, the Russell just seems to me a little bit weaker than uh, than these other indexes, and I still have that test down to the uh, 1578 as the downside objective for. I think we see a more meaningful corrective rally. In, uh, in the Russell. Note it's also the weekly high volume node. So that's in terms of the look back there, back to the August of 2018, the last time we had a tightening cycle, the, 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 high, the, the price that was most accepted by traders in terms of this uh, five, five year look back is this 15,007, uh, 15, sorry, 1570 level, which is the equality objective. So I'm looking for price to pull back into that and then we'll see if buyers step back in and we could be looking uh, for a move to the upside. DAX sitting right at that trend line that we were talking about last week. We probed underneath it, um, but we're seeing some buyers try to step back in here. Obviously, we're seeing some strength in terms of the US equity markets, and that's leading the DAX here. So if the DAX can get back through the uh, 13,430 area, I still see the potential that we get a squeeze up into trend line resistance, 14,397. Now, importantly, if we close on a weekly basis below this trend line, so if we close at or below the current lows for the DAX, that's going to set up another downside objective, a technical objective versus the swing structure here, which would give us a downside objective of 11,210. That also coincides with the 61.8% retracement of the entire post-COVID crash. So if uh, we really want to pay attention to how we close this week on the DAX, but if we can get back through that uh, 13,450 area, I'm going to be long again. I was long earlier in the week, but I got uh, taken out on, uh, on trading stops. So I'm still bullish, but we need the confirmation. I want to see a close back through that level to really uh, get interested on the upside. Moving to the Nikkei, similar setup to the DAX really, but looking a little bit stronger here um, on the daily now. Let me just move this for you guys so I can give you the level. So I want, I'm going to be long the Nikkei on any move back through 26,600. And if, uh, if that sets up, and we get that, we're consolidating in the upper range. The daily volume weight average price is bullish. And so we are looking for a move through 26,600. We've got the high volume low there, 27,755 as the uh, first objective. And then we have range resistance coming in at 28,410. So watch for that move through 26,600. 
as an opportunity to engage on the long side with those upside objectives in mind. Moving to the currencies. And we're going to start here with the dollar index. I'm currently short the dollar index uh, from the 105.30s, which I discussed uh, last week. However, um, we're not getting the follow through that I'd anticipated at this stage. And this is now starting to look like bullish consolidation here. So if we do consolidate, uh, let me just draw in the triangle pattern here. Let's see. So we're currently in this triangle pattern. And if we get a break through there on a closing basis, then that's going to set up the test. Remember, you'll, for those of you who uh, join me most weeks, you'll know that I'm actually looking for the dollar index to test the 106 level. That's, uh, that would be a, a minimum upside objective versus the uh, wave four consolidation here on the weekly chart. Note it is also the yearly R3 pivot at 106.39. So any move into that area, as long as we maintain bearish momentum divergence on both the weekly and the daily timeframes here, I'm gonna be watching for bearish reversal patterns there to engage on the short side. And certainly I'll be thinking about a move back down to test the uh, 103.50s as the, as the first downside objective. At this stage, we really need to take out this trend line, this internal trend line to, uh, to get excited about the downside. Like I say, I've got a risk-free short in play from the 105.30s. But uh, I'm starting to, the, the momentum is starting to fade here, and it's starting to potentially favor that spike into that 106 to 10630 area. And that is going to be absolutely key for me in coming sessions as an opportunity to, uh, to fade dollar strength. Obviously, as well, from a <clears throat> from macro perspective, markets are pretty well priced now in terms of the Fed rate hike. So that premium is slowly coming out of the dollar. Um, and so I'm just, just waiting to see if we can get that pop of the 106 to 10630s. Euro weakening up again, couldn't get through that trend line res, uh, resistance to the 10650s. So my sense now is that if that dollar is going to go for the 106, the euro is going to trade down here. Minimum downside objective is a 10220 test for the euro dollar. At this stage, can't get interest on the long side until we take out the trends, the internal trend channel resistance here on a closing basis through 106. 50s. Sterling, I had this one running um, a long position from last week. Let me show you what we were looking at. <clears throat> so we got the test, the long awaited test of the 78.6% uh, retracement of the post COVID advance into that 12040s. We tested the yearly S3 pivot to the tip, really and then saw a really nice outside reversal, uh, sorry, a pin bar reversal from uh, on a weekly scale. And then we got this uh, the five, the five day look back headed uh, in the right direction in terms of the daily chart, but we just are not seeing any follow through at the moment. So the next area of interest for me with Sterling is going to be a move that, uh, that trades ABC here into uh, the 121.10. Now, if we get into this area and we get a, uh, a bullish reversal pattern, then I'm going to be looking to play a long position in sterling and see if we can get a move up into the uh, trend channel resistance there, 124.40s. But at this stage, if we don't, if we can't hold that, uh, that equality objective, then uh, the picture doesn't look so great for sterling. And I'd be anticipating that we roll over and test into this uh, wedge. Uh, support here just below the 118 handle. So, um, so that's going to be a key area to watch. Obviously, that will coincide with the euro making uh, new lows and the dollar index making new highs. Uh, so we'll see how that develops. Dollar yen, this is the, uh, the other short I've got running at the moment. Uh, faded into, I'll show you the setup here. We, I was looking at 136.15 is my entry. I got 136.18 on a bit of a slippage. So what I'm looking for now really is the dollar yen to roll over here. Um, again, we really want to see the dollar weaken as well here, but with that, as I, as I was talking about, that loss of momentum really in dollar downside is a bit of a concern here and may mean that we have to make another new high in terms of the dollar yen before we roll over. But whilst I've got the short running, it's risk-free now. 
uh, running about 60 or 70 pips in profit. The target for me is this ascending trend line support and these prior highs here in uh, 131.40s. If we get through there, if buyers don't pick it up there, then we look for a test of the base here back into the uh, 126.50s on the downside. However, if <clears throat> in line with the dollar index making that new push to 106, we could see the uh, dollar yen up into the 138 handle. And again, if I get if we get the confirmation from the dollar index, we see that bearish reversal pattern, we have momentum divergence, then I'll also be looking at new shorts in the dollar yen up into those levels at, uh, at 137.50, 138. And that the weakness that we're seeing in the dollar yen at the moment is, uh, is part, in part being driven by weakness we're seeing in terms of the 10 year yields. So we were targeting a test of uh, three, three uh, sorry, 3.43%, and we got that test. We've got a bearish rejection on the weekly time frame, And so we've actually got a potential double top in play here. Now, if these yields start to roll over, if we can take out the trend line support here, that will add weight to the dollar and it will add weight to the dollar yen. So those trades could work if these yields really start to roll over. Um, but we're going to need to take out this trend line support. Uh, so back through 3% really on the downside to add, uh, add weight to those, uh, to those other trades. Euro yen. This one has potential as well with a, with a double top here, very clear. And we've got uh, momentum divergence in play. So I'm looking for a close through daily projected range support, 141.90s to short Euro yen. An initial target is going to be this trend line support, 139.29 on the downside. We're getting a nice bearish reversal, outside reversal pattern on the daily time frame, and note that the candle is red because of that five, uh, the, the volume weighted average price on a five day look back is uh, it's trading below that. So that adds weight to the downside in uh, Euro yen. Let's take a look at the Aussie yen. Similar setup. Well, the Aussie yen actually looks weaker. But it's been weighed by the Aussie. But you can see up here, we tested the yearly R3. We hit it the first time we got rejected, tra traded through it, but closed back below it. So I'm watching. This is potentially going to be a weekly outside reversal now in terms of the Aussie yen. If we can get through this trend line support here, so any close through 92.80s, that would be a confirmation for me on the downside. Initial target is the equality objective at 90.97. And below there, we, um, we have this monthly projected range support and the ascending trend line support at 90.30. So there's some decent downside targets to play for, and it would be ideal to see that weekly candle close red. So again, on that five period look back, uh, suggesting further weakness in terms of the Aussie yen, got a lovely double top pattern there and plenty of momentum divergence to encourage the downside. Let's move into the commodity pairs here. Dollar CAD. So this one, <coughs> we were looking for a pullback into the, uh, the high volume node on the four hour chart. Didn't get that, we've since accelerated to the upside. And so the Dollar CAD now has a date with destiny and that uh, level is 132.04. So that's an equality objective versus this swing structure. And ideally what we want to see is the do dolly, uh, dollar CAD trades at that 132 when the dollar index is above 106. And again, if the dollar index rolls over, it'll take the dollar CAD with it. So I'm gonna be paying very close attention to how we trade in this area as an opportunity to, uh, to fade dollar strength. The Aussie, <coughs> The Aussie is trying to defend these lows here, monthly projected range support at the uh, 68.40. So any close through there targets the equality objective of 66.40. This is the equal legs objective here for that correction to complete. And again, so if the dollar, if, if the dollar CAD is trading 132, we expect the Aussie to be trading at the 6640s. I mean, if we can get these bullish reversal signals on the daily time frame, I'll certainly pay most interest to. Uh, as long as we maintain some momentum divergence, I see an opportunity to fade that dollar strength and get in on the long side. Kiwi dollar, similar setup in terms of the, uh, the weakness here. 
we were looking for an equality objective once this chart updates, bear with me. So we're looking at 6120s as the, uh, sorry, yeah, 6120s as the downside objective. So any, any break of this triangle that we're currently trading in, so any close through the triangle support and through month, well, we've already tested monthly projected range support, we've got a, a bit of dead cat bounce there. So any close back through triangle support here, we target a test of 6120s. And again, thinking about the dollar index testing that uh, above that 106 level as we trade into that area, we'll be looking to see if we can see any dollar weakness emerging. Uh, let's move to uh, gold. <clears throat> we'll wrap up here with these commodities and the cryptos. So gold, any, any, if we can get a close through 18.15, oh no, sorry, one second, let's do that loads. Sorry, 18, if we can get a close through the 1800 level, we are looking for the gold to test its equality objective versus the 27, 2077 swing high, gives us 16.63 on the downside. So I'm gonna be looking to be short if we can take out the 1800 level, or we have a corrective pattern developing here, which could see us test the 1900 level first, uh, before the next leg to the downside. So if we can get bullish reversal patterns into that 1814 level, there's an opportunity there to play uh, for the C leg of this corrective cycle to get us up into that 1900 level. Uh, let's take a look at Bitcoin and Ether to wrap things up here. So if these, um, something to factor here, if these equity indexes are gonna make the corrective moves that I anticipated or talked about at the, at the start of this session, that should lead to some near-term uh, corrective action in terms of Bitcoin and Ether. I'd be looking at any move in Bitcoin into the 26,000 area and the descending trend line resistance as an opportunity to engage on the short side. And we have a downside equality objective for Bitcoin at 12,460. And again, if we, if we trade into that area and we've got that dollar above 106, you can see how the intermarket dynamics could all sync up there for a more meaningful shift in terms of uh, the cyclical dollar strength regime that we've been in. And we can see these cryptos get a decent bounce at the minimum. We'll wrap up here with Ether. <coughs> So the target for Ether on the downside is 851 versus the swing high here at eight, uh, sorry, 35.58. Again, we, that's, we want to see that test coincide with uh, the dollar trading above 106. But from there, I'd be watching for bullish reversal patterns because it would technically have completed this major corrective move to engage on the long side. And certainly we'd think about a move back up to fill the gap there at 1660, uh, at 16.70 level. As, uh, as the first target on the upside. Actually, it's more than that because it was the 1700 that we traded on the short side. So that's what I'd be looking for as a minimum upside objective for the first leg off the lows. Okay, so that's, uh, that wraps up the charts that I'm looking at. Hopefully you can see or get a sense of where I'm coming from. I'm looking for a correction in these equity indexes. I'm looking for the dollar to trade up into that 106, Euro 102, sterling, uh, back down into the potentially 120, 118 area, uh, dollar yen, 137, 138. And, uh, and then we could see that Aussie trade to its equality objective, dollar CAD 132. And then I'd be looking to fade that dollar strength if, uh, if we get the, the confirmation of the setup. Okay, so <coughs> with that said, are there any questions? Equally, if you don't have a question, if you type an N in the chat box, that's just as useful. I put a couple of links in the, into the chat. Um, one is for the uh, futures group, for those interested in trading, the getting my daily S&P 500 e-mini futures contract uh, planned for, uh, for the New York cash trading session. I'll also put in the uh, Tickmill Trading View account where you can follow my daily setup videos. Uh, WTI, okay, Richie, let me have a look. So I, I actually did cover this in, uh, in one of the uh, trading view videos this week. So on the four hour time frame, we're trading in this descending trend channel. We have tested the equality objective. 
So in, in terms of thinking about a corrective pattern, I'm always thinking initially of a three-way corrective move in the quality objective, 103.50s. For me to get bullish on crude now, we need to close above 107.30s. If we do, then this correction may be done and we may be looking again at a retest of the prior cycle highs and then on to new highs. However, we have taken out the daily trend line support here on a closing basis. So any loss now of this um, support zone at the 101 level, I will be thinking about it being in on the short side because we have an equality objective versus this swing structure here. We test into the 78.6% retracement of the initial move to the downside and sellers have stepped in. So if we take out these current lows, I want to be short looking for a move down to the 86 level in terms of crude oil. Does that make sense, Richie? Or the alternative scenario is we trade back through 107.30s, initial move to test the high volume node 110, and then we'll see if we can get a squeeze going to the upside. Good stuff. You're very welcome. Okay, guys, if there aren't any other questions, I'm gonna wrap this session up here. Uh, Love to see you join me in the, the Facebook group and, uh, and follow along my daily trade ideas on the TradingView account. Uh, and as always, traders, plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Until next week, thanks very much.